Samuel Bonnard is in the jazz spotlight. Nice to be with you, Sam, today. Nice, nice, nice to meet you, Ken. So you're born in Israel, and yeah. then you moved to Paris. How old were you when you moved to Paris? I was uh, six years old. Six? Yeah, only wow. six. How yeah, was that yeah. for you growing up like in Paris or leaving Israel to go to Paris, a new country, new language, new culture? New yeah, country? it was very strange because uh, actually I, I, I um, moved to the suburbs of Paris, south suburbs. So yeah, going from uh, Israel, uh, I was living in Haifa near near the sea, and uh, arriving in the suburbs of Paris was like very uh, disappointing and uh, a little bit strange. But uh, I, I, it took me one years to to like uh, you know uh, figure it out and uh, make new friends and uh, learn the language. Like, yeah, my my parents are French speaking, so I, I I I was already speaking, so that was okay. But it was more uh, like. You know, uh, acclimatating. I don't know how yeah. to say that, but in yeah. the, you know, uh, it's a whole, whole new culture, whole new life. And, uh, I bet. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, I can imagine for you. For me, when I went to Paris, it was two in the morning. You know, you get on the train, and I'm lost on the train, and some lovely lady helped me out, gave me <laughs> help, right? So I got off the train, and you're stepping up the steps, and as you step up the steps, you notice the Parisian lamps, you know, the lights in the street, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then wow. the buildings, you're like, wow, like, this is Paris. I mean, it's as amazing. a six-year-old, it must have been different for you, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what I remember is the tunnels, because there's was, there was a lot of tunnels in, uh, in France, and uh, I was always amazed, because there aren't in, uh, I mean, in Israel, so... Uh, it was like the land of tunnels. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then you 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 got there at eight, uh, six years old, and then a couple of years later, you mm -hmm. started to play guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the age eight, of eight. Eight years, I started uh, classical guitar. Uh, my my mother asked me uh, what instrument I want, and I I, I told guitar. And uh, I remember uh, it's also because they had a vinyl. vinyl of, right? uh, yeah, of Andres Segovia, my parents. Right. My parents uh and uh and i don't know why i remember this figure of andres segovia who is like the you know the godfather of classical guitar and and i i was like i want to play this instrument <laughs> is that the reason how huh, to draw you yeah to it? yeah, yeah. Well, they say they say music is the universal language do you think it helped you relate there did it make you feel good when you yeah. play guitar and Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, it's totally true for me. Uh, as I have known um, several cultures, I think uh, music is what links all. You know, it was uh, yeah. yeah, links uh, all all that for me, and and especially guitar. Because I don't know, there is something that uh, resonates. You know, with the strings, with uh, and uh, with the acoustics and all that. And um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I agree you with do that. it well, my friend. Thanks, thanks, well. thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, <laughs> Sam, thanks. you began performing for professionally at a young age as well, at 16. Yeah. How yeah, was that true. for you? How did that feel for you? Where was it at? Where did you, where was your first paid gig? And how it's did very, it feel for you at 16? Yeah, yeah. It's very fun because, you know, at, at the age of 13, I told my mother that I want to stop uh, uh, classical guitar because uh, I was like, my teacher was kind of severe and... I was, and I wanted, to, and I discovered Jimi Hendrix, oh, yeah. and, uh, and and Pink Floyd, and uh, and jazz, and all that, and 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 at the same year that I wanted to stop music, and, and a friend of my parents like um, offered me uh, for my bar mitzvah a, uh, uh, an electric guitar. Oh, wow! Yeah, and 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 the friend of mine uh, offered me like uh, a school friend offered me a cassette of uh, of Jimi Hendrix. And it totally blew my mind. It turned my like, and I became obsessed to to play like Jimi Hendrix. So so I started uh, uh, class um, electric guitar, rock, jazz, and very early, like at the age of fifteen, sixteen, I, I already had my band. Hey. My brother is a was a drummer. Uh, wow. Like I, I convinced him to to buy a, a drum, and uh, we started the band. We had a we had we had the chance to have a kind of garage garage. Uh, to play music my 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 parents are very were very tolerant and so we started a band and and actually it became a reggae band oh ah. yeah <laughs> so hang on let's get it straight now sammy let's follow yeah. this so you start with a classic guitar yeah then you get a Jimi hendrix cassette with a electric yeah. guitar yeah, yeah. and then your brother and you start a band and you play reggae yeah 
at the beginning it was like all kind of rock reggae etc and uh and i don't know why like very quick it became like mostly reggae i don't know it was kind of period and uh and uh yeah we 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 i mean i was i had this period where where i, I had my friends who, who, who make made me discover reggae music and all that and yeah my, i think my f my first professional gigs were were uh, with reggae <laughs> yeah how that happen yeah yeah oh it i mean we we had that band and uh and uh it was i think it was like at the local uh youth center or, or something wow. you know a social uh, youth center we had we had this gig i don't remember exactly uh, how'd it go it was very 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 good very good I, li I liked it i mean it was uh but believe it or not i had uh, long hairs and uh, and uh, <laughs> dreadlocks <laughs> that was really right yeah, yeah, yeah. So the kids dancing and everybody's up grooving to it, and you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It was really, yeah, about groove. You know, reggae was a great music teacher for me because it learned, uh, it learned me to to what is groove. You know, what is groove? Yeah. What is doing a, a cyclic uh, a vamp and and do it well and 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 work together to. It's not complicated um, stuff, you know, but we yeah. have to do it together and very tight and. Uh, and it's a very good uh, education. Uh, I mean, uh, for because after that, of course, I just made my way to all kinds of other music. But I always have this, uh, I think, uh, uh, rem remembrance of being in a band and and uh, and, and grooving together. On, it's that connection. Yeah, even on on simple uh, stuff. I mean, kind of simple. It's, it's not so simple to. To groove you know <laughs> yeah i was in my time in africa went down there and did yeah. a travel show for two months bob marley's like a hero yeah, his yeah music is everywhere there and everybody's wearing yeah, his yeah, music, yeah. you know um, yeah, yeah of course yeah but Marley, it's like it's changed changed my my mind i mean uh, the whalers and peter yeah. tosh and uh, yeah so you had obtained a degree in musicology at the university of paris uh yeah. in 2005 mm -hmm. and you played with some of the masters of course could you tell us more about who you played with um it's not i mean we yes we played during the, the master classes but yes during this time we we had uh paul blay uh steve coleman um uh don't remember which very famous jazz pianist anyway we all of kind all kind of great artists because there was near my university there was a festival called uh blue suburbs like banlieue bleu and a lot of americans were coming to perform and and coming to do a master class at the university so yeah it was wow it was i remember paul paul blay uh, played us blues uh steve coleman uh, played us all kind of stuff but i remember one one of lesson also uh i remember paul blay told us like uh, throw your computers uh, play music play blues uh, <laughs> it was like you know it was the beginning of the Fire. computers and all that you know and uh a lot of like you know, people studying stuff, but the lessons from these guys were 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 to play and to play. You know, interact and uh, so yeah. yeah, it's great great memories from from that. And then you left Paris. Mm -hmm. and you came to Montreal in two thousand nine. Yeah. Why Canada and in particular Montreal? What's the story behind all it's that? Very yeah, it's a very strange story uh, because uh, I I had uh, an ex girlfriend and uh, she she went to uh, she was a lyrical singer and she went to do a master class in Montreal. Oh. She came back and she told me, "Wow, it's so beautiful." She, she, Montreal is uh, wow. It's and I never went to Montreal, but at this time I really wanted to change my life, you know, because uh, I was twenty nine and I was like teaching and gigging uh, with kind of band but like i wasn't seeing my uh, my future in this city you know because it's very uh, uh, uh it's a very expensive city you work very hard and you, you can't find an apartment it's like i i, I needed a brand i need to change uh, my brand new uh, life you know so um and and at this time from the age of 25 26 i came back to classical guitar yeah, I, I really I felt a need to come back to this instrument, so I took like three years of private lessons, wow. and uh, yeah, to to like I didn't know for what, but I wanted I knew I I want to enter in some conservatory or master program or something, so I wrote an email to the the University of Montreal teacher, 
And, uh, and he told me, yeah, come, come, uh, come do the audition, uh, et cetera. And at this time, so there was... came to Montreal and did the audition actually in Montreal. Yeah. There was a program uh, enabling a visa for the French people uh, to come one year and uh, stay. And uh, so I used, this, I used this visa. I came. I passed the audition and I, and I entered in the master. What did you have to do for the audition, Samuel? I had to play some, uh, you know, some tunes because well, I'm a master of classical gu guitar. You you have to play like Bach, you know, uh, some Bach stuff, some uh, South American stuff, some Villa Lobos. So I had to play like 20 minutes of music. So cool. Mini concert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with some judges and all that. And, and yeah, and they told me, okay, you have a good technique. You have to work on this and that. And then we, 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 we thank you. So that was my point of entry to to montreal because i studied like two years and a half and i really enjoyed i mean i enjoyed very much this city it's uh, it's life is i mean it's beautiful it's uh so so i decided to stay i uh, i applied for a visa uh, permanent resident visa and then i uh from this i stayed you know <laughs> i never uh, and how is the music back. different from montreal to europe is it the same Different. Uh, it's kind of different. I think here, uh, I think music is really great in Paris. You know, there are great musicians from all the world. It's, it's a great, but what I like in Montreal is it's a very, people are more accessible. I mean, you can meet them more easily. It's more little. So very quick. You, you know, the people you meet them, you know, Paris I was going to ask you, is, is the audience different? That's what I was going to ask you next. Oh, the audience, the audience is a little bit different. Yeah, it's maybe, maybe more open-minded. I don't know. But right. it's really my point of view. I mean, but I, what I like is, here is the, the really the, the, in Montreal is the mix of America and Europe. You know, I, I like this, this, this point of uh, meeting, you know. Between, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's all multicultural, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so I think it's very here? hybrid, you know, like, uh, yeah. like my. Uh... Yeah. So uh, yeah, I started uh, so very quickly. I, I did a solo classical guitar album on on 2012 uh, with some compositions of mine with some uh, classical uh, covers, and then in 2014 I started a, a band, uh, actually a quartet. Uh, with percussion, um, bass, double bass, uh, sax, saxophone, and clarinet. Nice. And uh, I really need uh, felt the need to to compose and to uh, and, and to propose my 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 music. You know, so uh, yeah. So that, were, that that's yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. You were awarded a scholarship to participate in the Alternative Guitar Summit in New York area. What was that experience like for you? Wow, this is this was crazy. It was it was this <laughs> summer, yeah, yeah. I I um I had this scholarship to to go to the alternative uh, guitar summit in uh, Big Indian, uh, New York, uh, in the Catskill uh, Mountains. Uh, yeah. Look, man, it, it was like a dream come true. I was four days in a in a resort with uh, John Schofield, uh, Bill Frizzell, uh, Julian Julian Lage. Uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel, I mean, all the, all my heroes were there and yeah. master class, master classes, jam, jam sessions. Uh, what an experience, huh? I was on the cloud. I mean, and we were like 100 guitarists from all over the world. Mm. All, uh, all there and jamming in the parks. Uh, I'm lucky because it was after the pandemic. So uh, we could jam, we could meet, we could get together. So like every we were going everywhere, there was a jam going on, you know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was kind of a kind of experience. I mean, really I meeting bet. meeting these guys like, but I think what was interesting it was we, meeting them um, in a relaxed uh, environment, like not like after a concert or something. Like you're eating with them, you're hanging with them, you you know. You're living with them. Yeah. For four days, right? Yeah, and they are like simple guys, and very sweet and very nice. And I mean, did you get into the city at all, New York? Not this time, not this time. But uh, but uh, I, I went in 2015. I went to play in New York 
Oh um, yeah. yeah. Some gigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had a, I had a gig in, I had a classical guitar recital in Connecticut. Connecticut. So, uh, yeah. So I, I, I made a one week tour and I did some gigs in New York also with, with jazz musicians and, uh, and I, I plan to come back, uh, in January, man, maybe, maybe. Cool. So you enjoyed it. Good run. New York? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Different I city, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know if I would like to live there, but, but, Me uh, mu <laughs> yeah, musically, I, I mean, musically, yes, it's, wow, it's something. Yeah. yeah. I did two trips there once. My buddy was doing an acting class there in uh, neighborhood playoffs, and I spent 10 days there down the Lower East Side. Saw all of New York you want to see, right? Just sort of the tourist thing. Yeah, yeah. The next year I went back as his best man. He got married. And it was in Scarsdale, which was a totally different trip. Totally okay, okay. different experience. Good for you, though. That's great. You've had, yeah. let's see, you've released four albums, right? You played with some greats. Mm -hmm. uh, can you mention some of the artists that you played on with some of your albums? And uh, what's the difference between like on stage for you and in studio work? Oh, it's very different. I think it's two different uh, jobs. Uh, I think in the studio uh, you have to uh, to be to be very well prepared, We're very um, very concentrated. Like it's you have to be in the moment. And uh, but in the on the on the scene, it's different. Uh, you you have to um, you have to to enjoy. You you have. I mean, for the two, you have to enjoy, but. No, I don't know how to describe it. It's, uh, it's different, but it's really different. It's different skills, I think. You can be a very good performer, but you have to develop also to be a good recorder because uh, so you, the more you record, the more... Because there is a stress or something. When, when you're recorded, there is a kind of stress, you know, because you know it's, it will be a one-time thing, you know. So uh, so you have to relax. You relax and to, like, let that flow... Which do you prefer? Do you like both, obviously, or do you prefer one or the other? I think I like both, but I prefer playing on stage. Yeah, Live. <laughs> yeah it's more joyful. I mean, more immediate. To be people. Yeah, it's more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about yeah. a night in Tunisia. A night in Tunisia. It's a it's a famous tune tune from uh, Dizzy Gillespie. It's it's a it's a jazz yeah. standard, in fact. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I really I, I really love this standard. Because it's uh, like uh, one of my favorite, and uh, and it's very it, usually it's played on la late Latin rhythm a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to revisit this with uh, with my you know my my my, my stuff, and because I I always start from guitar arrangement, you know. So um, for this one, I found like this bass part that you can hear at the beginning of the song. Yeah, uh, it was obsessing me this bass. So I wrote the bass part, and, and then. I wrote the, the arrangement on that, and um, yeah, as as I say, uh, usually I I compose on git on the classical guitar, so it has to like go together on 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 the guitar, and then I transpose it for the for the band.
pretty smooth. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. I'm glad you, you appreciate it. So, Sam, you've been very involved in education, teaching classical guitar since 2017. You must find that rewarding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love teaching. Teaching is, yeah, it's um, it's like very rewarding, like to see the, the students, how, how they evolve, you know, uh, you, sometimes you take take them from zero and you bring them bring them to to a point and uh, and you can uh, also uh, share um, like uh, I don't know say, say that share your passion with them and and sometimes you give them but sometimes not you know but uh, but I think yeah it's re re really fun and and actually uh, this year I have great students and more and more like my class is going with great I mean you the young uh, amazed amazed me that's good yeah sometimes like 12 13 years uh, they are like they have the, their passion passion for, for guitar and well that's good that was the question I was going to have for you is there a lot a lot of interest in jazz guitar uh, uh it's mixed I have classical guitar students and I have jazz students also so must teach uh, you what you remind you it must remind you of what you know you know because you yeah. know so much you're so well educated in it Exactly. and trained and you're play all the time so when the kids are there with you and they ask you questions uh, or you're teaching you must have that moment where you go I, I, I learned that. I, yeah. yeah I learned too you know because it it enables me to, to come back to s stuff that I didn't do since long time and yeah you you it makes you learning also you know uh, like keeping learning uh, yeah yeah that's exciting. And so, and sometimes you. I use them to learn things, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure because they look up to you, and they're learning from you for sure, right? I, yeah, I so it so. sort of works both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes, yeah. like let's say, I want to learn a standard, so I said, "Hey, let's learn this this tune," and and so that I can learn it too, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you've been on concert tours in North America. You've done Europe, Middle East including yeah. Montreal International Jazz Festival. That must have been fun. As mm -hmm. well as jazz clubs, such as the Rex Jazz Club in Toronto, Upstairs mm -hmm. Jazz Club, Montreal, the Yellow Submarine, Jerusalem, and uh, yeah. the Rockwood Music Hall. Fun, yeah. yeah, they must have been yeah. fun times. Uh, huh? that, yeah, that was that was really fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was during a tour I did in, in Israel, a two weeks tour with my quartet. And uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah. fun. So gigs. What's, what's next for Samuel Bonnet? What's next? Uh, Samuel, uh, Samuel Bonnet <laughs> is releasing a new album ah. called uh, Hybrid. Hybrid. Yeah. Uh, so it's a tot trio album, um, which is now, which will be released on uh, um, November twenty fifth on the Good platforms. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and also there's the lo launch event on uh, November twenty seven. Mm -hmm uh so I, I invite people to uh to go to uh my my instagram my uh my uh, facebook page uh, my website uh because there is this link because i'm actually doing a crowdfunding oh. campaign to help me finishing my my album it, it's finished but i i need some more uh money to uh to launch it so uh so i'm actually at 70 percent of my goal you're getting there, and I and I have like 18, 18 days uh, left. So I invite people to help me uh, to uh, to go this to this page, and uh, also this is the way to buy uh, tickets for the the event, which on the November twenty seventh. So uh, it's uh, yeah, that, that, that's it, and, uh, and the, so the album uh, also will be played uh, in two two thousand twenty three in uh, concerts in Quebec. Mm -hmm. For the moment in Quebec, I'm working on uh, booking uh, shows uh, Good for across, you. across the country. I hope in Vancouver. Yeah, exciting <laughs> times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good yeah. luck with the album. Good luck with all of it. The writer mm -hmm. Bob Ben from the wholenote.com said about you, the common thread amongst all of this is a skill which enables completely authentic communication. When you listen to Samuel oh. Bonnet, there's no mistake in who you're listening to or mm -hmm. what he's saying to you. <laughs> Samuel Bonnet, thanks for being in our jazz spotlight today. Thank you very much, Ken Boyd. All the best. I, I uh, appreciate uh, really much uh, your invitation, and uh, I hope to meet you uh, soon. See you in Vancouver. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>